Uh, it's good stuff, man. <laughs> we bought like 10 litres of this today. It's an organic orange juice here in Australia. The oranges actually taste half ripe. And uh, anyway, it's a 24 hour mountain bike race. I've finished eight of them. I've won two overall. And I've done the Paris Press Paris, which is obviously the world's longest single stage race ever. It's 1,243 kilometres. It's in France. It goes from Paris to Brest and back to Paris. I did that, no support, in 51 hours, 30 total time. So my tip for 24 hour races are basically, the biggest tip ever is to pace yourself properly. If you go out like it's a two hour cross country race or an hour criterium or whatever, you're going to fucking pay big time. <laughs> so you've got to go out basically like you're riding with uh, with an absolute newbie. That's basically what you got to do. Just cruising around, cruising around, just rolling around talking and... And people go, oh, no, that's not true. You've got to race, race, race. And I'll tell you what, man. No one fucking races in a 24-hour race. No one's racing. It looks like you're racing because you might have good technical skills so you can just rail past someone, but your heart rate's really low. You, you know, so there's no one that's actually racing, racing a 24-hour race. Maybe the last lap, if you're like, you know, 10 seconds behind each other. Yeah, but no one's racing, racing. Look at the power data. Look at the heart rate data. Nobody's racing in a 24-hour race. I mean, it, actually, that's so I take it back. They are racing but in a 24 hour pace. The pace is really light. So you're racing, but it's a 24 hour race. It's not a cross country two hour race or a one hour criterion road race. So it's really light stuff, low heart rate, low heart rate. And it, people can debate with me on that one, but I've, I've had Jason English's heart rate data, man. The dude just keeps it really low the whole time. I'm just consistent first lap about as fast as the last lap, just cruising along. And guys like that with really good technical ability, just fl fluent the whole way around. Someone like myself, <laughs> I can climb as good as anyone, but uh, on the downhills, <laughs> I'm losing a lot of time. I basically give away four hours at the start of a cross-country race, 24-hour style, because of my technical because my technical skills are getting better, but they're not just up to scratch yet. But anyway, so let's cut to the chase. Pacing is the biggest one. Pace, pace, pace. You gotta go out so easy. You gotta go so slow that all the team's riders is gonna be passing you, basically. Just go with slow people. And then the last six hours of the race, feel free to pick it up. <laughs> so ride for 18 hours easy and then smash it for six hours if you want. People go, oh, no, no, no. I'll do it the other way around. Smash for six hours and then just blow up for 18 hours. <laughs> Take it from me, man. I've, done, I've, I've finished eight 24 hour races. I've DNF'd a fair few, but I've actually finished eight of one, two. And I don't use any pills or caffeine or cocaine. I know a lot of guys do. They use the speed pills, Dexies, the cocaine, bit of meth. You know, some guys are shooting up stuff. And then no judgment on that. I'm just saying, if you're doing a lot of hardcore drugs, then you can sort of go a bit crazy. But even then, you still got to pace yourself. Because I know a lot of guys who do the full-on drugs, both legal and illegal, still bomb out, man, because they got too hard. So you got to pace. Even if you're on speed and meth and cocaine, you got to go at a, at a decent pace. Otherwise, you're going to blow up. You're going to run out of your glycogen, and then it's like game over. So pacing is the biggest thing I can give. For a 24-hour rider, pace. Just go easy. Go so easy, you, you feel like you're going too easy. Just basically, that's what you got to do. So your first lap in a 24-hour race should be as fast as your last one. If it is, then you, you've paced right. And there's Unless, of course, it starts raining and the course turns to mud. But if it's a dry course, your first lap should be exactly the same as your last lap. Maybe your last lap should be a little bit a little bit faster than your first lap. And then you know you're part, you've done even. There's no point going like that with your wattages and heart rate. You want to just have a, an even. Because if you average, you know, three watts per kilo for an hour, and then the next hour you average two watts per kilo, and then you're three watts per kilo, that's just really going to fuck you up later on in the race. So you want to have, like, a consistent watts per kilo per hour. That's what you want to go for, consistency in 24 hours. It's not a road race. You don't have to attack up the road and get the draft. It's not a cross-country race where you have to get a 10-second gap. People who treat it like that blow up. People who treat it like that, they don't come back for more. <laughs> I've had a few cross-country friends come to a 24-hour race, race it for the first six hours, totally blow up, still win the race, but just go, I'm never fucking doing that again. Never doing it again. <laughs> because they don't know how to pace. You've got to pace yourself for a 24-hour race. I've spent five minutes saying pacing, pacing, pacing. Second one would be nutrition. You have to eat enough carbohydrates, otherwise you're going to bonk. You're going to run out of glycogen, you're going to hit the wall, and you're just going to be 
crashing easily and your mood's going to drop, you get a flat tire and you're going to want to pull out. So carbs, how many carbs? One gram of carbs per kilo of body weight per hour. If you're in the US, half a gram of carbs per pound of body weight per hour. Minimum, 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 minimum. So that's what you want to do. One of my friends, uh, his methodology is he eats that as well. Plus he says, I eat till I'm about to vomit <laughs> and then I keep riding for another two hours. So every two hours he has a, a large carbohydrate meal till he's about to vomit and then he, he knows he's had enough and he keeps going for another two hours. So you're going to burn a lot of calories. You're going to burn maybe 20,000 calories in a 24 hour race. 20,000 calories, that's like three kilos of fat. So you got to keep those carbs in, otherwise you're going to hit ketosis really fucking quickly. And you hit, you, when you hit ketosis, it's game over. Your, your race is over. You're going to spend the next six, seven hours recovering, and <laughs> it's gone. Ketosis is no power. <laughs> game over. So I've covered pacing, covered nutrition. Lastly, on nutrition, if you eat fat, if you're eating like fat, like nuts or oil or whatever, when you're in a 24-hour race, it's just going to slow your legs up. It's going to gunk your blood full of fat. You want to have no fat. You want to have just carbs, carbs, carbs the whole 24 hours because you want your blood clean and flowing. Because any fat is just going to slow you down. It's, you know, you're going about sleep. You're going to be sleep deprived. And any excess fat is just going to slow you down. And a lot of people out there who aren't, aren't vegan, so they're eating like animal products. And I'm like, oh, I see some people at 24-hour races, and I'm like, how the fuck are you eating a cheese, ham, slice of pizza? And then you look at their face. An hour later, they're just like, oh, I regret that, it's fucked up. And I'm like, shit, <laughs> that's like slashing your tires, man. And no wonder people are taking speed pills to keep going. Even then, even, even on speed pills, people still can't finish 24-hour race because they don't have enough carbohydrates. So I'm not promoting, I'm not promoting speed pills, by the way. I'm not, I'm not promoting any drug usage. I'm just saying that's just how it is. And uh, so what I like to take in the 24-hour race is the dates, have a box of dates with me and fruit juice and that's just it. Dates and fruit juice, the whole thing. And make sure I'm pissing clear every hour. When you have a whiz, you want to be whizzing at least every hour, at least every two hours having a whiz. I whiz when I'm on the bike, just, you know, I can't do that on YouTube, but uh, I piss when I'm on the bike, actually wee while I'm riding. Urinate while you're riding on a fire road, make sure no one's going to come screaming past you and cut the track. But anyway, so you want to be pissing clear. Every hour, every two hours, definitely. If you're pissing yellow or straw, knock back another bottle. You want to be pissing clear. What about salt pills? Well, I don't take any salt pills in a 24 hours. Some people do, it works for them, it doesn't work for me. It just makes me feel more bloated and thirsty, so I don't do the salt pills. What about bikes? You want to have a bike that you used to? My recommendation is get a 29er dual suspension. Whatever company you like the feel of, you know, because mountain bikes are all about different geometries and setups and stuff like that. So I like the special Oz Epic, I like the giant anthems, they feel good for me. What feels good for you, that's gonna be a different thing. But 29er, man, that's just like that's the ultimate 20 24 hour machine. 29er Julie, <laughs> that's the ultimate 24 hour machine. Tire pressure, you sure you know that. 32 PSI, 30 PSI, whatever tires you used to. And make sure you mark your seat posts and mark your angles on your seat because often things can slip down. In 24 hour race you things can slip down, you get tendonitis, whatever. So you mark your seat posts with liquid paper pen, mark your cleats, mark your seat posts fore and aft, things like that, mark your handlebars with some liquid paper, a little liquid paper pen, so then you know if anything slips, you can go back to that. And uh, that's about it. And just expect some real low negativity periods, but they're generally just because you're not getting enough sugar or water. But then there's a the third thing that can happen is sleep deprivation really fuck your head over. So you've got to just accept that you're going to have some periods of depression because you're sleep depriving yourself. So you just tell your body, hey body, this is okay, we're going to sleep tomorrow, it's going to be over soon, Just let's just keep rolling through. And if you pace yourself properly, that's really easy to do. But if you go out too hard, man, fuck, I've got heaps of mates that can you know, just smash the 24 hour races, but they don't do them anymore because they just push too hard and just crack themselves. So you've got to really pace yourself and enjoy it, have fun, you know, have fun. Just just completing a 24 hour race is a really a big challenge. It's, a, it's, it's an amazing challenge. There's plenty of people who can never do a 24 hour race, mainly because they don't know how to pace themselves. But anyway, so that's it. Pace yourself, get your carbs in per hour, make sure you're pissing clear, use a 29er dual suspension, and uh, the grips, handlebar grips lastly, the grips I recommend are called Ergons. Ergon grips. Get a pair of them. Ergons, man. Makes all the difference. My friend Jason Morrison, Adelaide, 
he gave me that tip back in 09. Ergons, man, that's just where it's at. Or Specialized, make a copy. Get those Ergon style grips either way. Post your comments down below. What have you found helpful in your 24 hour racing? And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you want to see more of these videos. Thanks for watching. Post your comments and questions down below. I'll see you out there in the next 24 hour race. Peace.